Rebuilding a large old twin cylinder steam engine. This is part two, the initial disassembly, and the first thing to go is this rough piece of metal that is stuck in the keyway on the flywheel. The keyway on the flywheel and the keyway on the crankshaft don't match anyway. This flywheel is from a different engine. At the end of part one of this short series, I showed the crankshaft view from the underneath, and you can see it all rotating and hear it knocking. And the only part of this engine, in my opinion, that started life being built correctly was the crankshaft and the bearings. But the bearings now need some attention. But first, as you can see here, it's time to remove this hideous piping that's on the engine. This really annoys me because it's so badly made. And it's the first thing that your eye gravitates to when you look at the engine. Often when working on old engines, the bolts are sheared off and all you're left with is the head super glued into the hole. But I have been lucky with this so far. Just look at the cutouts to allow the piping to pass by the cladding. Here the pins are coming out of the valve gear. They're not even fastened in, they're just pushed into the holes. The engine can't have worked successfully like this. This engine has just been cosmetically tarted up to sell on eBay. So now it's time to put it right and make it go well. The first time I ever saw this engine, I really did not like the oil cups. Three oil cups, machined by hand, very badly, and they all look entirely different. Returning to the piping, this is the exhaust pipe coming off now. Again, like the inlet pipe, very badly made, and the cylinder cladding has had to be cut away to allow the pipe to fit on the engine. Time now to look inside the valve chests. I can't wait. You can see how badly made this engine is. Look at the two top nuts on the valve chest. Although some of the studs are coming out complete with the nut, at least none of the studs are sheared off. So there's nothing horrific so far. And yes, it has a slide valve, and the slide valve looks OK. It's now time to completely take off the valve gear. The valve gear's all been painted, which is really a bad thing to do. It never looks right. Valve gear should be metal coloured, in my opinion. Looking at the state of this engine, I would think that the valve gear's been painted for a couple of reasons. One being, the metal work's probably rough, and the other one is it's probably rusty as well. I will find out in due course when I remove the paint. The expansion link, as I've shown earlier, is just held with a couple of rivets pushed in. The rest of the fittings are simply bolts, and they really need to be pins for a good bearing surface. Here's the close-up of the slide valve, and although it looks a little bit rough, it seems to be OK. I can't say I'm too impressed with the way the metal's been hacked away from the inside surfaces of the steam chest. I'll see what the other one's like. The machining of the slide valve doesn't look too good either. I'll remove the steam chest and have a closer look. The face of the slide valve is fine, and if you look at the ports here on the actual cylinder, the ports seem to be relatively unmarked, so that is a good thing. Here I'm about to remove a pin from the crosshead. Always use a soft piece of metal to tap the pin out, never use a steel bar, you will mark something. I'm using a piece of brass rod here, and gently tap the pin out. The little plastic box that I use for putting the parts in is getting quite full now, and I would normally store them in a sequential order, but as all these parts are not particularly well made, and I will be remaking some of them anyway, I just put them in the box and I'll sort it out later. Time now to take off the cylinder head and have a look in the cylinder. These are hexagonal head bolts, exactly the same as the bolts used to hold the exhaust pipe and the inlet pipe to the engine. The cylinder head bolts are all 2BA size bolts. Apart from this one, this looks more like a quarter Whitworth to me. So it looks like at some stage of the engine's development, someone sheared off one of these bolts and then drilled it out and re-threaded it quarter Whitworth, which is not a problem, at least it saves me from doing it. And because the hexagonal head is the same size, it won't show at all. I do notice that the cylinder head comes off very easily which really is evidence that someone's worked on this part of the engine recently. It's a very strange engine is this. The bottom end of the engine is quite industrial, made from steel and gun metal and the normal materials. And then the cylinders up here 
are made from brass, which is pretty naff really, bearing in mind they are two inch bore seriously big cylinders. And when I look inside the cylinder, what do I find? A recently fitted, by the look of it, aluminium piston. More about this later. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.